Is he smooth or rough? Rough. Oh, look! What's he having for lunch? A mussel. You Wait. know who has Mr. Starfish for lunch? Mm -hmm. Mr. Seagull. Mm -hmm. Could we eat Mr. Starfish? No. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Mr. Pelican flies by every year, and he goes one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, ho! And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ho! Now, when it's a heavy wind, he balances like this. And he balances like this, and then he glides down low. And then he comes up, and then he has to balance again, and balance again. on this? This is why it's called a gooseneck barnacle. You can't do that to Mr. Rock Barnacle. He stays tight on the rock. Feel this little soft thing. Because there's so much in the It's an anemone. It's an anemone. You think it's an anemone? Yeah, yeah. that's what it must be because it's green and it's squishy, but all the rocks are off it. But it's pretty tough. When you go down to the beach, you find all kinds of seaweed. Some of them you can taste. Some of them you can feel, and it feels like felt. Some of them have little air bubbles on them, and you can pop them. Some of them feel like leather or like plastic. And some of them are so long that you could even jump rope with them. Look how long this is. You do not two little jumps, so one. Two little backwards. butterfly comes down here to Muir Beach and spends the winter in these pine trees. At night when it's cold, they all cling together with their wings folded so they look like dried up leaves hanging there. In the morning, when the sun comes out, they open up their wings and you get to see the orange and black color. And right away you can recognize it as our monarch butterfly. It's a cool summer day, so dream away all that may confine you. Look around you and say, I'm on my way. Outside happy, I'm outside happy, we're outside happy and free.
For more information, visit our website, www.terwilligerfilms.org. Bay Tidelands is brought to you by the Terwilliger Nature Education Legacy. It's a beautiful day Who cares if the sun is shining You're dreaming away Today we know we're taking time to Look around and explore The world behind the open door Lost in a day There's no telling what may happen You wander away The next thing you find is adventure Time to explore the world behind the open door. There's a whole new world inside. There's a whole new world inside. There's a whole new world. like freedom and it's much better to let them go in the out of doors where they belong and where they find their own kind of food. Down on the beach we will find mussel shells and Mr. Raccoon lives here in the grass and in the shrubbery and he goes down at night to eat mussels for his supper. There's a whole new are exposed, the mud is exposed, the sand is exposed, and we see all kinds of things down in the mud and under the rocks that we would never see otherwise. Look at your footprints that are in the mud. If it was solid mud, we would sink deeper, and every once in a while you do sink down and you're falling into a clam hole. Look at all the other things that have washed in. There's a seagull waiting to eat some trash that might come in because he's got a big job to do. There goes another gull, and there's a duck because the ducks are just beginning to come. They get tired out in the water once in a while, and they walk along the mud flats to rest. Mr. Clam, and he sticks his neck way up like this so he can get his food from the tide as it comes in. Look, look, he's squirting. He, <laughs> he got me. There it is. No, here he is. Look. Is he coming That's back? Him. Oh, he's not that brave. Sometimes if you dig fast enough, you can get him. Clam. Clam. Because he goes down very, very fast. You got him? Yes. Now feel the muscle along the edge there. Now feel the lines on the shell. This makes it a clam shell. Many years ago, the sand was all here and it was pressed together. Along came an earthquake, along came an uplift, and pushed the sand up and pressed it together. This is why we call it sand stone. Look over there on the shore. There's a gull. And just beyond the gull is a snowy egret. 
Now he's standing in the water, he has long legs. Now watch that egret, he doesn't stand still very long. He says, I'm looking for my food. And he wiggles his feet around in the mud so he can find a clam worm or he can find a little amphipod or isopod walking along there. Now there's an egret that's bigger than that, that has a yellow bill and black legs and black feet. And he has big wings and he pulls the wings to him when he flies. And he is a common egret or American egret. And he's the one that has those very beautiful feathers that ladies used to wear in their hats. Pick a piece of this plant. Do you see that it looks like a lot of little pickles all joined together? Pickle weed. Now I'd like you to bite it and taste it. And can you taste the salt in it? Now I'd like you just to eat it because you can eat this just like spinach. And this plant grows wherever there's salt water. There are a lot of beetles down here. Let's look through the pickle weed and see who else lives here because the ants should be here. It's and a big the spider. Got a big spider? This is what Mrs. Meadowlark has for lunch. Isn't she beautiful? She's gonna have all the little insects that live here. The tiny little flies that come by, she's gonna have those for lunch and she spins a beautiful web. And even Mr. Mouse can live here because I have found <coughs> mouse tunnels through here. The mice wander all through here because then a hawk can't dive down and get them for lunch. <laughs> I would like you to feel the top of this flower and tell me what do you find out about it? Sticky. It's sticky, yeah. isn't it? Now then, I'd like you to feel around the base of the flower and tell me what you find out about the base of the flower. Sticky. Squeeze it. It's sticky too. Because of this, it's called a gum plant. And do you see where it's growing? It's just above the most of the salt water. But it says, I always like a lot of salt water around me. And so it's just at this level, above the pickleweed, that you'll find Someday you're gonna go on a hike and you forgot your lunch and you're so hungry you think, oh, I think I'll just die if I don't get something to eat. You look around and find a dry stem like this of fennel, but be sure that you look at the leaf and see that it's like this and it tastes like liquid. And then take your dry stalk and peel off the outside. Then after you get it all peeled off, break off that pithy part, put it in your mouth, Take a dry seed and put it in your mouth and chew it with that pith, and that's Indian chewing gum. And chew it and chew it, and pretty soon you're not hungry anymore. In the winter time, our bay is full of migrating waterfowl, which are mostly ducks. Now the first bird to come will be Mr. Coot. Now next to come after Mr. Coot will be Mr. Pintail. Paint your heads all brown, put on your white shirt, put on your gray coat with a long pintail out in the back. And then this time put on a big white canvas coat and put on a little black scarf around your throat and put a orange brown stocking on your head and make a straight line from the top of your head down to the end of your nose, and then you're Mr. Canvasback. Let's see who lives here. There's Mr. Barnacle, Mr. Muscle Shell, anybody home? Oh, look!
Look, a whole family of crabs. And isopods, too. There are little isopods. Hold your hand, and I'll flat, and I'll put an isopod in it. Hold your hand real still and see if Mr. Isopod will open up. He's scared, so he's all curled up like a ball. Oh, my guy opened. Hold him real still and watch him walk. Now, he can't hop and he can't jump. He just walks. Look at Mr. Crab. Do you see that he is blowing bubbles? He says, some giant has hold of me, but the only thing I can do is to blow bubbles and sort of try to hide myself. So whenever you pick a crab up, you'll find him down on the ground. Put your finger in the middle of his back, and this will stop him. Then put your middle finger on one side and your thumb on the other and pick him straight up. When you turn over a crab and the bottom is flat like this, this is a mother crab. When you go to the beach and you find a rock, many things live under it, clams and crabs and periwinkles. And whenever you turn that rock over, after you see who lives there, be sure you turn it back, because that's the roof of that person's house. <laughs> some seeds out. Any space worth taking, there's a little out making this home somewhere. Just a home somewhere. Everywhere. Mr. Raccoon in a little lagoon. Works in the night by the light of the moon to make a home somewhere. Just a home somewhere. Look at all the people building houses every day. Building them way down around the bay. And the raccoon tries to make a home somewhere Just a home somewhere To make a home somewhere Just a home somewhere Just a home For more information, visit our website, www.terwilligerfilms.org. Grassland, Chaparral, and Freshwater Pond is brought to you by the Terwilliger Nature Education Legacy. Got a minute, spending the day 
who knows where Spring outside, happy inside Something sweet in the air I'm running, I'm hiding I wish I had wings Imagine all I could see Life is full of beautiful things Sunshine and I'm riding over the sea I'm going to meet someone special to me. Hey, Raul, over here! Hey, Raul, over here! Grandpa's waiting for us up in the mountain. Hey, Raul, over here! Got a minute spending the day, who knows where. But I'm feeling happy inside, beneath the beautiful sky. And I know why Robin sings life. It's full of beautiful things. Life is full of beautiful things. You see all this coverage, all on the side of the mountain there here? Uh -huh. Back up this way. Yeah. That coverage is called chaparral. It's real brushy. It's a cowboy's nightmare. And you know why? Why? Because it's so thorny and hard to ride through. And you see these things here? Yeah. These are called shaps. And that comes from chaparral. And these down here, papaderos. Now all of this protects you in the brush. Now we have lots of rain here in the wintertime. Summertime it gets quite dry and the hills turn brown and the brush gets dry and the very fire. Oh look children, lots of something fire damage. to taste. Come and pick a blossom off of this tree and put it in your mouth and nibble it, and what do you taste? This is Twilliger. Oh, Hi, boys. What? Hi, Mr. Brewster. Hi. What are you doing on this mountain this morning? Well, we're tasting all sorts of things and finding all sorts of things. Boys, come over and have a blossom off of this huckleberry. Put it in your mouth and nibble it, and taste it, and you'll taste one drop of honey. And then come and get a blossom off of the manzanita. Now, Look at the blossom. All those bees want some of it. <laughs> we're going to share it with the bees. But look at the shape of it. It's like a little lamp. Bye, boys. We're going to have to go now. Bye, Mr. Bruce. Bye, Mr. Bruce. Bye, Mr. Bruce. We've got something different here. Come and feel this one. This is real sharp pointed. This is the one that really tears your coals. Ow. This is called chaparral pea. Chaparral pea. Ow. Ouch. Ow. Yes, Ow. sir. Oh, that's a sharp one. There are many plants in the chaparral, and they all have toughness of leaf in common. The manzanita, the huckleberry, the madrone. And the ceanothus. Ceanothus. This is one of our main plants in our chaparral area. And I feel the ends of the branches of the little bush. They're kind of sharp, aren't they? Yes. Sometime you're going to be hiking up here and you're going to feel something crawling on your neck. Now, Turn your hand counterclockwise and pull this out. It's going to be a little tick. This is also called a tick bush, but it's a beautiful flower. It blooms in the spring. Smell it. Isn't that fragrant? Yeah. Mr. Deer comes along here and he says, well, that looks kind of tasty to me. I think I'll have some nice new oak leaves. And so he goes, nibble, nibble, nibble. So when you find a little rounded bush like this, then you know that this is a deer snack bar. <laughs> <laughs> 